the Wii does what Nintendo don't. Or does it? Greetings, Gemstones. It's your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, before I start, I'm pretty sure you guys have a couple of questions, like, why is his hair missing? Or, how come he's wearing a white shirt? Well, after I made the intro, I decided to buzz my head, hop in the shower, and wear a nice white bright shirt to brighten up the atmosphere. So, that's the reason why. But, on today's episode, we're going to talk about my... Nintendo GameCube collection. And what I play that on? Of course, my Nintendo Wii. Now again, these are all games I used to have, no longer have. They were uh, uploaded to a laptop, um, given to me on uh, a bunch of flash drives. I put them all on a single flash drive, but the only difference is I owned every single one of these GameCube games because the GameCube was a very awesome system, one of my favorites, and before we jump into me showing you those games, I want to tell you a few more other facts. Like, for example, did any of you guys know that the Nintendo GameCube was originally going to be called the Star Cube? And even though Japanese and American uh, companies say, no, 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 that's a false rumor, yeah, it actually is a real thing. The Nintendo GameCube was going to be called the Star Cube. They're going to base it off Star Road from the Super Mario Brothers. Uh, World game from Super Nintendo. How crazy is that? Can you imagine going around all your friends' houses and saying, hey man, you want to play the Nintendo Star Cube? And also, if they did name it the Star Cube, what would the logo look like? You know? Would it be like an actual star from a Mario video game? Or would it be some kind of other crazy design star deal? What do you think? But they decided to sw uh, say no to that idea. They were going to continue calling it the Dolphin. Even that idea was swiped. No, we're not going to do that. And they decided to come, with the, come up with the Nintendo GameCube instead. So, there's your first fact. Second one being, with the GameCube originally supposed to be called the Nintendo Dolphin, you notice how there's a few Dolphin references in that actual uh, system itself? Like with Wave Racer, there were a lot of Dolphins that were jumping in and out of the water. Um, you've got Mario Sunshine as well, and it was, was hosted on Isle Delfino, hmm? and it looked like a giant dolphin. And let's not forget Pikmin. Remember the name of the ship in that game? It was called the Dolphin. Uh, the creators of Nintendo were really set on naming this system the Dolphin, so far to the point that even the graphics processing unit chip, the GPU chip, actually has the term flipper on the actual chip itself. How crazy is that, right? And I'm only gonna do one more fact today. Did any of you guys know that with internal programming that if you held down the Z button that the GameCube would actually make a noise with one controller uh, which was a squeaky noise that went around followed by a little kid laughing when it uh, the symbol got into the center. And if you held it down with four controllers, that it was more of an oriental Japanese type of sound that went around before the, the cube hit the center. It was pretty interesting. Now, a lot of you may have known about it. A lot of you may have not. But here is exactly what they sound like. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? Now, let me get to my collection. Let's head over to the TV. <coughs> okay guys, so here is my GameCube collection. We're gonna go to Nintendo. Let's 
Koa actually has the original logo. Never been able to tell if I can make the noises though with the Wii. Alright, so here you go. And as you can see on the screen right away, it immediately says Nintendo Loader version 6.489. That is the most recent updated version of Nintendo. No. I'm going to go through the actual menu. I haven't seen a lot of people do this recently, but I'm going to go through the actual menu. My game's on a USB loader, and as you can see, it's all the way down at the bottom. It tells the Symphonia we're going to go all the way up. So you still use the Wii remote to control the menu options here, but when you get into the actual games itself, you have to switch to the GameCube controller. So uh, it says uh, boot the GameCube discs in the drive, and that's always going to be there for all of your GameCube discs. And then we've got that in Kaidos Origins, the second one. Now it kind of puts it in a weird order in a way. Uh, it's alphabetical, but uh, not in order the games may have come out. So Baton Kaidos Origins is the second game in the series, and then that's the second disc. You got Baton Kaidos Eternal Wings and Lost Ocean. And that's the one that I beat into the review on through Nintendo in here. And of course the second disc. We've got Beyond Good and Evil, really, really great game. Love playing as Jade in this one. I personally enjoy taking pictures in this game more than anything else. And of course, you know, they got the uh, good, good, Beyond Good and Evil Part 2 coming out here very, very soon. Billy Hatcher and the Giant A. To me, it's one of the hidden gem platformers that not a whole lot of people know about. I enjoyed it. It was a very Sonic-esque type of a feeling with the game. It was really silly with the story, though, because you're basically just a kid who gets bonked in the head, and all of a sudden you wake up in this world full of chickens, and you got to kind of save the world from the evil uh, by basically pushing around gigantic uh, eggs um, to defeat your enemies and things like that. It's, it's pretty neat. Darkened Sky... This is the Skittles game. This is really, really weird. Basically, he plays a young lady uh, who has a smart-ass character sidekick. And he, you go around and you collect Skittles throughout the world. It's, it's a weird, weird concept. It's not about Skittles, but you collect Skittles in the game. Um, it's a very interesting, weird platformer. It's not the best looking of graphics, not the best of voice acting, but it does have voice acting. But it's really, really weird. It's been so long since I played it. I know you play as a young lady. I can't remember her name. She's got red hair. And she uses a staff to attack things. It's, it's interesting. Evolution's World is a game that I've actually never played, even though I've owned it. Um, I do know that it is a turn-based action RPG, but I haven't really gotten too much into it. Or I didn't really touch it. But it was a, friend, a game that a friend gave me. And, you know, maybe I can do play the game and do the review on this channel. And you guys can... Uh, uh, tell me what you think about it. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Who hasn't heard of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles if you know Final Fantasy? Now, this game here was really interesting. Um, one of the few games that I actually did beat uh, has a story where you choose a character who has a family and you have, tra you have a trade that you follow and you have to save the world from the miasma taking over. The only way to do that is by filling up these orbs and you go around with the caravan and like the final magic, you don't get to like the very end of the game, which, which is really weird. Uh, you can play this game with multiple players, but you have to have Game Boy advances to do it. Uh, and plug them into the Game Boy, uh, so, sorry, plug them into the GameCube via the uh, controller ports. And then uh, while you're watching everything on screen, they're doing everything on their handheld, which is really interesting. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, again, is another one that was given to me, and I'm sorry, is another one that uh, I bought, <clears throat> but again, I never really played it. And the reason why is because when I got this game, I was actually playing Final Fantasy Chronicles, so I wanted to focus more on that game. And then I never came around to playing this game because I got uh, uh, Bat Kaidos. I had gotten uh, Mega Man X, which you can also see on this list. So again, there's another game that I have, I own, I actually bought, but I just never got around to playing it. 
And really what I mean by that is I got maybe like an hour into it, and playing a game for about an hour really isn't me consider playing a game, so to speak. So that's why I said I really haven't played it, because I only got an hour into it. Gotcha Force was an interesting one. I don't remember too much about it, but I do remember that uh, you were a little kid and you played, it was like a mech type of game. Uh, you were like battling mechs. It was like a ba mech battle uh, game in a 3D environment, which was uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I Ninja, uh, another little kid, kitty type of game where he basically plays a ninja covered in blue. And it seems kind of funny, my daughter watches a show called Hello Ninja, and the boy in that game, in that show, I'm sorry, reminds me very much of the main character of I Ninja. And they gotta give me some credit, I haven't played a lot of these games in years, many, many years, so I'm not gonna remember a lot of features about them, unfortunately, because of how long it's been since I've actually had all these games and my possession to be able to pick them up, take the disc out, and put them in a, in a GameCube. So, that's why I'm going to be giving you very little facts. Uh, Kirby's Air Ride, a very, very fun uh, Mario Kart type of game where you basically play as Kirby and a bunch of other characters and you race around tracks and you have abilities just like in the Mario games, you know, to, you know, stop them from winning the race pretty much. So, But it's a very, very, very interesting twist on how they did the cart series, uh, pretty neat. Mega Man X Command Mission, uh, another one I played, another one I beat, uh, had an interesting plot twist. It's a turn-based Mega Man X game, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you level up, you gain abilities, you control people like X and Zero, uh, you've got other party members with you too. It does take place shortly after the actual X series, like a little bit further into the X series, but not quite at the time. If Mega Man X fans are out here watching that, you know, great. Others who don't know about it, there's a bit of a, there's a spoiler right here. Um, it's before the time when X actually got destroyed, if I remember correctly. Um, but it's a really interesting uh, twist on uh, 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 turn-based JRPG elements and Mega Man as well. And of course, Metroid Prime, who hasn't played Metroid Prime if you have a GameCube. Probably most people have played this game. Uh, this was actually the first game I played on my GameCube when I got it. I fell in love with it, although there was so much uh, hype against the game, like the fact that it's going to be a horrible uh, 3D game, like why would you turn Metroid into that? And it became the best Metroid game out of the three Prime games altogether. This is the one that just blew everyone else out of the water. I know it blew me out of the water, and I enjoyed playing this game. I enjoyed beating this game. <clears throat> Uh, I didn't know about the whole scanning everything when I played this game, so I beat it at, mm, collection-wise, like 90-something percent. I think it was like 91, 92% collection-wise, and when you get to the Metroids in this game, actually, the Metroid, and you do scan everything, the Metroids are actually 50%. See, I didn't know that. I got 50%, like, on the phase on area, the very last area, so I beat it at, like, 57% scanned, and, like... 97% collected, or like collection and scan all together, it's like 90, 91%, I'm sorry, 92%. But very, very fun game, I enjoy playing it. Resident Evil, the remake, the very first remake I personally ever played on a game system, and it was very fun. I love how they added elements, the game direction was great as it is the normal game, the graphics were awesome, the additional story was awesome. Um, if you didn't burn the zombie bodies. They would actually get up and they would run after you again, which is really, really cool. Um, you know, of course it has two discs, so there's a second disc. Scalar was a platformer that I had where you're basically your boy who gets transported in some kind of world and you become a lizard and then you end up like going to the world and you jump on the platforms and you gotta find your father and everything else. And that's all I can really remember too much about this one. <clears throat> I do remember beating it, but again, it was so long ago. Um, I do believe he does find his father. It's pretty interesting story. Skies of Arcadia Legends. The original Skies of Arcadia came out on the Nintendo Wii. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the Nintendo Dreamcast. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to make that mistake. And this one here, basically, when they put it out on the GameCube, they changed up a few things. I think it's a faster frame rate. Uh, the enemy encounters aren't as high, but it's got a really, really great story about a young man who just kind of wants to be like a sky pirate, so to speak. Kind of like Vaughn from Final Fantasy XII, 
but way cooler. And the cast is so good, and the story is actually really enthralling. It like, really pulls you in. Star Fox Adventures and Star Fox Assault. Star Fox Adventures was more of a um, platforming 2D game with not very many spaceship elements uh, built into it. And you meet the character Crystal, who's like a native of the uh, dinosaur planet that you end up crashing on. And then Star Fox Assault is a continuation from that, and Crystal actually becomes part of your team. And there's more of the original gameplay style, Star Fox flying through the sp- flying through space on airships and everything else. And you have your typical team, you know, ranting at you and saying everything on the screen. It's really cool. So Star Fox Assault brings you more back to the original gameplay, which is more of a fun game in my personal opinion. But I did enjoy Star Fox Adventures as well. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, Rogue Leader. I mean, come on. Who didn't like playing Rogue Leader? Collecting all those ships. And it was personally better than uh, number three. I did play... Uh, Rogue Squadron 3, but I didn't own it because I like Rogue Squadron 2 way better. It's a very, very fun game. Uh, there were so many different ships you could collect, uh, different planets that you could travel to. It was just, it was basically a game where you played in your ship the whole time. And uh, the gameplay was great. The, it looked really amazing for the GameCube at, at the time. It was a great, awesome game to play. And of course, Super Mario Sunshine, like I mentioned earlier, you know, with Isle Delfino. I mean, come on. This was a game that people, another one that people thought, oh man, this the hype's really more negative. You know, this game's going to be really shitty and stupid and it's going to suck. But it actually is a very, very fun game to play. It's really got awesome uh, platforming. It's got great elements with, uh, you know, you collect uh, stars, the way you have to uh, collect certain items or figure out certain secrets is with your uh, your gun that's on your back, your water gun's on your back, the pack, I'm sorry, I don't remember again. The name of the guy that I apologize. Uh, Tales of Symphonia, of course, another great game. Uh, game where he plays a young man who's basically just trying to help a young lady become like an angel, you know, a celestial being, so to speak. Uh, and he ends up uh, doing elements like meeting his father and things like that. Now here's the interesting thing. Since I've gotten this game, and a few other games that I've done on here as well. And that's how it doesn't say Tales of Symphonia, and there's number two on it, like up here in Resident Evil. That's because I went through a different program to put this on my uh, uh, flash drive for my Nintendo Wii to play my games. I'm hoping that you can actually go to the next disc, you know, it's just maybe set up differently, because both of them are on there in the file, but it's not showing it on here. Uh, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, uh, this is a really fun game. Um, there's supposed to be some like dolphin elements in this game as well apparently, but I don't really quite uh, see how there is, you know, I mean of course you got the water, I mean you hear, I, I played a little bit of it sailing through the, the season and everything else, the only thing I don't like is that there's a lot of water, a lot of water in this game, that's really my only negative threat about this game, other than that gameplay is fun, story is great. And then of course, you know, you got Twilight Princess, you know, the one that originally came out on the GameCube, and then they ported it over to the Nintendo Wii, and they made the controller more right-handed. Link is left-handed. I'm left-handed. I love playing as left-handed characters, you know. Got uh, Samus from Metro Prime, left-handed. Very cool. Um, and that's why they transferred over to the Wii, because most people are right-handed. So in the Wii version, Link is right-handed. They just kind of like flipped everything over is what they did. But originally Link is left-handed and when you play it on this uh, GameCube version, you'll notice that as well. Uh, we got Two Sliders, which is like another game very similar to um, F-Zero, uh, but more of a futuristic type of thing. Not as, it's more of a racing game. It's not really a game where you can actually use abilities and attack uh, your, your party and stuff like that. It's just a game for uh, racing. That's all, all it really is. And then of course I got Vex is another platformer. Interesting game uh, where you play as a character who has to go around collecting hearts. The yeah, actual beating hearts. To like open doors and progress through it. And you have a special ability that makes you stronger and invincible for a time. I don't remember too much about the story unfortunately because I don't know if this is one that I finished or not. I feel like I did but it was so long ago I can't quite remember 
Virtual Quest is another one that I bought, but I never really played, so I can't really tell you very much about it. Wario World, who hasn't, you know, I enjoyed Wario World very, very much. Um, again, because it was an earlier game that I played when I bought it, uh, I do remember beating it. It's just been so long since I've actually done anything with it. Or, I don't, I don't know what I'm meaning by that last one. It's been so long since I've played it, I don't remember very much about it. And uh, there we go, now we're back up to the very, very top. So these are all my games here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27 games. And yes, I didn't have a huge collection, only 27 games. It's not a whole hell of a lot. Um, one thing I want to do, uh, talk about really quick uh, before I go into any gameplay is uh, the actual menu itself. Um, not a whole lot of people uh, talk about the actual menu itself now. In recent versions of the game, like you can go through the menu, but it wouldn't tell you anything. But you notice how there's a big blank space right here on the screen uh, below where it says BBA emulation and network profile auto. Uh, now, with later updates and newer things, it actually gives you explanations of certain things like memory card emulation. Emulates a memory card in slot A using a .raw file. Disable this option if you want to use a real memory card on an original Wii. And with that, you notice you can go all the way down to the memory card blocks, and you can I see it says uh, default size for new memory card, size larger than 251 blocks, or another cause issues. And I just keep it at the 251. Um, I thought there was an option to do that, multiple memory cards and uh, native controls. This one's pretty interesting right here, it's native controls. You can use like a PlayStation controller to actually um, play your GameCube games on here, which is really interesting. Um, there's cheating paths, apparently putting on, putting on cheat codes. You've got things like uh, force wide uh, widescreen. Um, it doesn't work on all games, but it says, it says patch games to use 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Not all games support this option. The patches will not be applied to games that have built-in support for 16 by 9 Use the game options screen to configure this display mode. Now, I really don't need to do this because I already have component cables, so um, I don't need to uh, force this on any game. Uh, then it's got a uh, forced progressive scan. I'm actually going to turn that off. Again, I've got uh, component cables, so most games will literally ask when you play them, you know, would you like to play in progressive scan? Although there are many games that did not support Progressive Scan, and Tales of Symphonia, a very popular uh, Tales game on the GameCube, is one of those games. Pretty interesting. We've got Auto Boot. We've got the Unlock Read Speed. Now this apparently says that disk read speed is normally limited to the performance of the original GameCube disk drive. Unlocking read speed can allow for faster load times, but it can cause problems with games that are extremely sensitive to disk reading time. timing. Um, so yeah. It can, the load screens can load very quickly. And I've test, tested this out on a couple of games. But the game, there was one game, Wario World, which I had tried it on to make sure that Wario World did work. And the loading screens were quick, but the game would glitch or freeze. So yes, there is a possibility that this thing can actually freeze your games and stop performance. It doesn't ruin anything. It just freezes the games or you know has some kind of glitch where the screens are like cut or whatever. Um, we've got the OS report. I have no idea what that does, I'll be honest with you. Um, we've got the Wii U widescreen. If you do do this on Wii U, you can actually, uh, on a Nintendo set to display the 4x3, which results in bars on the sides of the screen. If playing a game that supports widescreen, and enable this option. You know, most games, even if you use it, uh, I mean, the Wii U is, uh, HD, so I'm pretty sure it's going to support widescreen. Um, we have the drive access LED. What's really cool is that if you turn this on, then the Nintendo Wii will actually light up like it normally does when you're playing a game. And that's why I have it on. It's pretty neat to have that going. Uh, logs, I've never checked that. Um, I can have four game pads, four controllers, you know, 
Set the maximum number of native GameCube controllers ports to use on the Wii. This used to be kept at four to enable all ports. This option has no effect on Wii U and Wii Family Edition systems. So if you have the actual Wii Family Edition system, this will not work. In fact, I'm not even quite sure if you can even mod that one. Um, we've got the languages, uh, system languages set to English for NTSC, you know, videos auto, we went to the memory card stuff, the video width, you can actually change it to 720 if you want to. So that would fit this entire television, you know, or you can just do auto. I just keep it on auto. Screen position, I don't touch. Patch about 50. Uh, I don't touch. There was one I was going to show you um, where you can verify your, uh, your actual um, ISOs, but I don't remember which option that was again. Oh, I think I'm, is it, is it that one? Mm, I can't remember which option it is. Uh, put that at zero. Oh, well, but there's an option where you can actually verify your, um, your ISOs. But we'll, uh, we'll get out of this right now and we'll jump into some games. I want to show you this darkened sky. This is really, really weird. Switching to the GameCube controller. See, do you want to display the game in progressive scan? Of course, I'm going to say yes. Why would I not? So this game is super rare. I believe it usually came in a combo pack, if I remember. And I don't remember what the other game was that I played. So to speak. And so that's why there's a... Uh, I just decided to uh, keep this one instead of the other one. May the wind carry my words to you, Mother, wherever you may be, in this world or the next. I'm fine today, Mom. Sick of hurting Twinsels, but fine. One of Necroft's lackeys tried to make me salute, but I kicked him in the, well, he'll be gibbering and standing in Inferno from now on. I miss you. And the game doesn't look that bad. The FMBs at least have fairly decent graphics. skip it? Aha, you can skip it. Good, because I don't want to play this entire thing unless it's like 10 minutes long, you know what I mean? I just want to get into some of the gameplay. So, here is... Okay, again, it's been a while since I've done this, so... Wow, easy, sister! I'm on your side! My side? Who are you? Tommy Grant. So, Necroth, we call me Dim Soon right about now. So, an expert on Necroth, are we? Oh, I happen to live out near his neck of eternal chaos. I hitched a ride here with his minions. Minions! Great, I just love minions. They're Necroth special forces. They know all about your little orange discovery, and they're here to lighten your load. But if you're from Necroth's hood, why would you want to help me? Let's just say he whose face may He's not be good. glimpsed and I have issues. <laughs> Want my help, yay or nay? Thinking of going with yay. I don't know exactly how 
to play this game. I not like any of the controls are actually working on it. Oh, that's right, I forgot it's the, uh, it was the, uh, um, actual top buttons to attack. Like I said, it's been a while, so, which is weird to have the top trigger button to attack. Triggers a jump and the right triggers to attack. Yeah, this game is, I mean, it's not a bad game, it's a... supposed to be yeah but apparently uh I died which is fine because now I can go to uh another <coughs> oh, oh yeah guys just so I'm back on my menu I'm just trying to learn how to be on the menu Saw, the game does not support progressive scan, only 480p here, only 480i. So we'll go to English. Okay, so I don't know what I'm doing. Okay,
Oh, so far. Far. Oh, oh no. no. That's payday. The common belief. Stop it right there. Just, Just want to give a little, little bit of a taste of Jade Cocoon. Jade Cocoon. <laughs> Beyond <laughs> good and evil. I'm um, really way off on tile names, right? Um, what I just really love and enjoy how cinematic this game actually is. So we're going to now go back to the main menu. Alrighty, guys. So we're back to the menu again. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit wider. It's because I put it in the uh, video width at 720. So there's that. Um, hmm, should we try another game? I know this video's already gone on uh, pretty long, but uh, uh, yeah, why not? Just a few more minutes. Let's do uh, let's 
Star Wars Rogue Squadron to Rogue Leader. You know, well, uh, a lot of people don't have anything to do, so, uh, you know, let's try to keep this as entertaining as we possibly can. Playing Progressive Scan? Well, why not? 480p, 60 hertz. Oh, yeah. Gotta love that Lucas Arch intro. Yeah, I'll be ABC for the moment. The Death Star will soon be in firing range of Yaman base. Destroy the large deflection towers on the surface, and the TIE fighters defending the approach to the trench. Fly down the trench and fire your proton torpedoes when you're within range of the exhaust port. Alrighty, let's do it. We don't need an explanation. Oh, I went backwards. Let's do it. A long time ago, in a galaxy, That was horrible, I know. All wings report in. Red 10 standing by. Red 7 standing by. Red 3 standing by. Red 6 standing by. Red 9 standing by. Red 2 standing by. Red 11 standing by. Red 5 standing by. Food coloring Red 7 standing by. Thanks, 
switch only. What's up, sweetheart? Sick. You're not sick. <laughs> okay, do you want a snack? All right, well, guys, I'm gonna go get the little one something to eat. <laughs> and that's what happens when you don't pay attention when you're a father and you try to uh, uh, do stuff. But um, alrighty, so this is Rogue Squadron, and yes, I'm just flying around like an idiot right now. Because my little one, as you can see, wants something to eat. So we're going to cut the video off right here. And uh, we'll head back to the menu one last time. Okay. Alrighty, guys. So I'm back here on the menu. Uh, I just wanted to show you a few different games. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, the gameplay here on this. I really enjoyed playing these games, even though it was only a few minutes, and I know, uh, like, with Rogue Squadron, I literally just crashed because my little one needed something. But hey, you know, parents, fathers, responsibilities, all that great stuff, right? You know, I have kids for a reason, and at least I enjoy having my little one, so. Uh, but, uh, there you go. That is my game collection in a nutshell all together. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making this video. And now let us head back to the chair. All right, I'll see you in a bit. So there you have it, guys. That's my Nintendo GameCube collection in a nutshell. Played on my modded Wii through Nintendo. And I think that is very awesome that I'm finally able to do this and play all of these games because even though I have a Nintendo Wii that is backwards compatible with GameCube games, as you all know, I don't have any more physical copies due to due to my past. So, I just think it's really awesome that you're able to do this, that we are able to do this. Um, it's really cool that, like I mentioned before, that the system is still updating itself. Nintendo is still updating itself. And I've got the latest version, 6.489. I probably uh, am saying that incorrectly, and I apologize, but you will obviously saw it earlier. So it's really awesome. The GameCube is my second favorite game system over the PS, uh, besides the PS2, which is my first favorite game system. And it's done really, really well. Granted, its launch titles were not the best, you know, and it's the first system that I know of that didn't have a Mario game as a launch title, being Luigi's Mansion, that was a really fun game as well. I just never had that game. I have played it, though. And it's amazing that this stuff is out. It's so, so cool. Um, I think I'm going to end the video here right now. Thank you for enjoying these facts. Always thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to see my latest videos, and do me a favor, gemstones, stay shiny for me.